I think you need to buckle your seatbelt because the next three, four, five months of CPI will probably be very, very bad. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. Billionaire investor Chamath Palihapitiya, as well as his co-hosts on the All In podcast, are again signaling very choppy waters, warning investors of the next couple months for markets. And by the way, they do present the data to back it up. I want to play you the full 90-second clip, but just two things to realize. Number one, this episode that dropped just a few days ago, it's almost two hours long. I'll play you 90 seconds, but just realize this is part of a much bigger two-hour-long conversation. And number two, today's video is a compliment piece to yesterday's video, Is Now the Best Time to Buy Bitcoin? While yesterday's video, we talked about fundamental metrics, technical analysis for Bitcoin specifically. Today's video is more about the macro environment and why it may not be the best time to go all in on altcoins. As I described in this video from a few weeks ago, I am still very much dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin on the way down, but I am prioritizing Bitcoin over altcoins for reasons explained in this video. A link down below, seek it out. But moving forward, let me share with you this 90-second clip of Chamath explaining why he believes inflation is not going away, and that's going to force the Federal Reserve to continue raising rates aggressively, which will lead to lower lows in all markets. Afterwards, I'll share with you my strategy, but watch this and listen to the reasoning. I think you need to buckle your seatbelt because the next three, four, five months of CPI will probably be very, very bad. Seven, eight, nine percent. Why? There are a handful of components that have gotten completely run away. Number one, the biggest one is rent. And so rent works on a three month lag. We're going to reintroduce what the true owner's equivalent rent is into CPI. So we can already forecast that CPI going up. Oil is at 105 bucks a barrel. Russia is basically trying to break the back of Europe by now messing with their nat gas supplies. Um, the German energy minister yesterday said that if that happens, it could be a contagion equivalent to Lehman Brothers with respect to energy. When you play all of these things out, what you have is unfortunately rampant runaway costs that really have no mechanism to get back in check in the absence of some real governmental changes, our policy on this Ukraine-Russia war, you know, how we intend to sort of uh, work or cooperate or fight with China. All of these things have to get solved. So in the absence of that, prices are going to continue to go up. And so what does the Fed do? How does it throw away what little credibility it has left when there's 8 and 9% inflation prints and saying, we think we're done for right now? You can't do that. So they will overcorrect because there is just going to be so much pressure for them to act. All roads... I think lead to lower equity prices. Okay. Do you agree with Chamath or do you disagree with Chamath on the future of the economy, the market going forward? I really would love to hear your take down below. So throw a one in the chat down below if you agree with Chamath. Throw a two in the chat if you think he's wrong and feel free to share why. One for agree, two for disagree. Let's all check the comment section down below. This is my strategy on what I'm doing in this market. And keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor, nor can I see the future. So please do your own research, make your own decisions. I'm just sharing what works for me. But because some of the fundamental metrics shared in yesterday's video, like I said, I'm actively dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. If we keep going lower, I will continue to dollar cost average in. Now, how long do I think I will have to wait? Well, three weeks ago, we did take a look at the Bitcoin halving. Bitcoin will see a new all-time high when this happens. We looked at some of the supply versus demand fundamental factors. I will link that down below as well. But because of this macro uncertainty, as well as my belief that Bitcoin dominance will continue to rise, I am focusing more on Bitcoin in 2022. I put out a poll to you in our community section. Are you buying altcoins in 2022? And almost 60% of you said yes, almost 30% of you said no. And by the way, that's fine if you're willing to take on more risk for yourself. 
And also, if you're willing to wait through some potential pain. Again, I ultimately don't know what this crypto market, what the price of Bitcoin will do tomorrow, and neither do you. But I do believe whether the price of Bitcoin trends up, that's the best case over these next several months, trends sideways, or trends down in 2022, I think Bitcoin dominance will continue going up. But let's keep moving. There is news happening in this space that you should know. So like always, check the timestamps. But first up, Celsius enlists more advisors to help with potential bankruptcy. So according to the Wall Street Journal, Celsius is headed towards bankruptcy and they're looking for help. So here is the news. Celsius has hired restructuring advisors from the firm Alvarez and Marcel to help the embattled crypto lender prepare for a potential filing. If this news sounds similar to something you've heard, that is because the Wall Street Journal reported last week that the crypto lender had sought assistance from a different firm, this time a law firm, Atkin, Gump, Strauss, Hauer, and Feld, LLP, for its financial restructuring. So we haven't got a public update from them yet, but according to WSJ, things are still happening behind the scenes. For example, it is rumored that Goldman Sachs is leading an investor group to buy Celsius assets. This, of course, only if the lender goes bankrupt, they are trying to buy on the cheap. Goldman Sachs is looking to raise $2 billion from investors to buy up distressed assets from troubled crypto lender Celsius. The proposed deal would allow investors to buy up Celsius's assets at a potentially big discount in the event of a bankruptcy filing. Right now, this isn't confirmed yet. Goldman Sachs only appears to be gauging interest as well as solicitating commitments from Web3 crypto funds, funds specializing in distressed assets, and traditional financial institutions with ample cash on hand. So we will see. And for the $2 billion it is speculated that Goldman Sachs is trying to raise, Celsius does have over $8 billion lent out to clients, as well as $12 billion in assets under management as of May. So we will see how this plays out. I will keep you updated. Now, for some perspective and a potential silver lining in all this, if there is a silver lining, is the decentralized, at least the blue chip decentralized lending, crypto lending platforms are still working fine. It's the CFI centralized finance lenders in crypto that are stressed right now. Aave is just fine. Compound is just fine. Liquidity is just fine. Basically, what that means to you, all the KYC and consumer protection regulation in the world was no matched for open source transparent protocols. So some food for thought. And by the way, again, just to paint the full picture, many DeFi lenders, like the small, lower cap, highly speculative ones, yeah, DeFi protocols have failed. The blue chips remain unfazed. And by the way, it's not to say that we won't see some pumps in some altcoins, even in bear markets. For example, Sand gains almost 20% in the wake of tech giant's metaverse announcement. The Sandbox COO said again on Saturday that an acquisition by Meta will never happen. So two things to unpack there. But first off, what was this big announcement? Meta, as well as Microsoft, announced the formation of something called the Metaverse Standards Forum. The stated goal of the Metaverse Standards Forum, which was announced on Tuesday, and by the way, also includes Alibaba and Sony, is to foster coordination and cooperation among the hundreds of companies working to establish themselves in whatever the metaverse becomes. So these tech giants are teaming up, keeping the lines of communication open because they don't want to lose control. Now, Misari asked, would Meta purchasing a virtual world like the Sandbox game make you bullish if one of these centralized juggernauts bought out one of these decentralized metaverse? Well, the COO of the Sandbox confirmed this will never happen. I like that. I like that because we're fighting for a decentralized future to get away from some of the corruption and, and stealing of data from these big tech giants. All right, that is the video. My name's Austin. See you tomorrow. Going to be a hell of a week. We will keep you updated.